the uh, quarterly says, whenever we look at the issue of suffering, the question comes, how did sin and suffering first arise? I think most of us realize that Satan came up with it all by himself. The interesting thing to think about is God, knowing everything ahead of time, created Satan, knowing he would do that, and created us, knowing we would follow him, follow Satan into this misery. But he did it anyway. So people, I have a very close relative of mine who blames God for that. If there is a God and he made this world, then I want nothing to do with him because <laughs> this is an awful place and blames God for this awful place. But... But we, um, it was never intended to be an awful place. no, but God knew ahead of time. So if you were going to think about creating a child and you knew it was going to go bad and become Hitler or something like that, would you just not have the child? No one would know. God would say, I'm not going to make this one because he's going to turn bad. I'm not going to make them because they're going to turn bad. I'll only make good ones because I know ahead of time who's going to be good and who's going to be bad. So I'll just quietly not have the bad ones. He could have, couldn't he? He could have done that, couldn't he? I mean, there, there isn't any reason he couldn't have done that. We wouldn't have known. The angels wouldn't have known. He could just not make the bad ones. <laughs> exactly. What people don't, what people blame God for is the very thing I thank God for. Because we were made truly free. And the evidence that he would go ahead and make beings that he knew would just pain him <laughs> shows that he truly values our freedom. He's not just quietly wiping out the bad people. He's allowing us to make our choices, have our consequences, but it had a huge consequence to him. So, because I, I think in, in just terms that are different maybe than some people, I think the difference between us and ants, for example, little ants that creep around, we can step on them easily, we can poison them easily, and we do, because we don't want ants in our food or our houses or anything like that. But what, it, what would it be like to become an ant? The whole ant population is going to die if I don't become an ant. It's for you to become an ant, live like an ant, die an excruciating death of an ant, and then be an ant forever and ever and ever and ever. Think about that difference. Would we do that for these little ants? Well, what is the difference between us and an ant versus, I should go like this, between us and an ant and us and, and God? He created this vast universe, and if you don't know how vast it is, the Webb Telescope is busily out there. James Webb Space Telescope officially is out there telling us what we're missing out on. In one direction, it's found galaxies 9.5 billion light years away. So try to, and that's just what we've been able to find, much less what's out there even beyond. So here's a God who, according to John 1, says he created everything. Everything that was made was made through Jesus, the sort of communication part of God, if you will. Light takes a hundred and light travels a hundred and eighty six thousand miles per second. Per second. In this amount of time, one thousand one, it can go a hundred and eighty six thousand miles. So how far would, my, would light travel to be 9.5 billion light years away? Think about that. And that's in one direction. Here's the earth. It's looking in one direction. That's not this direction, that direction, or this direction. In every direction, that's as far as we could see. And that's not the end of it, I'm sure. That's as just as our limited capabilities can see. So in every direction, we can see 9.5 billion light years away, we can still see galaxies. So this being we're talking about, being in the crucible with us, who made all of this and run, runs it, so to speak, amazed the angels, and Satan too, 
by coming to this one little cancer cell in the universe, one little cancer cell, and becoming one of us. Not only becoming one of us, but allowing us to kill him and then resurrect and be a human the rest of his life, eternity. So that boggled my mind because eternity is a long time and this universe is a huge universe. So imagine this, this vast universe being run by the being who saved us. This one little planet, he could say, oh, well, they'll just kill each other. And really, we would snuff ourselves out, I think. I really believe that God will come just before we would kill ourselves. Because at that point, Satan would have no excuse to say, well, if you hadn't interfered, I could have pulled it together. Well, when we're on the brink, and the Bible does say, accuses Satan of destroying his land and killing his people. Also making the world a desert. So it has to get pretty bad, right, to get to that point? to the point where we would have snuffed ourselves out. Well, if God left us alone, we would have just snuffed ourselves out and all, all's good. But he has the whole universe to look at. He has to figure out what is going to make sense to all my creation, because they're all free too. 